let us get started the purpose of this webinar uh, testing as career exclusive webinar to freshers job seekers one of the reasons why we wanted to conduct this webinar is there are many people who want to get into the testing field but they do not know what they are going to enter into simply because the peers are doing testing they get into that or okay let me try this also but anything in life if we have a formal approach with proper understanding the chances of getting the success is pretty high so we wanted to give some of the industry insights on what is the testing what is the market what industry expects from people that will be helpful because many people without knowing that they try and then attempt they try hard but end of the day if success is not coming to them uh, they feel slightly uh, dejected rather than getting into that mode if you have proper information it's better for you and then you can get yourself equipped much better that is the precondition why we want to do this thing okay now let me go to the next slide first thing that you need to understand what is the size of the industry anywhere if you want to get into the business or the job market you need to know what is in it how big it is without knowing that it will be very difficult for you to assess the exact situation this webinar will go for about 40 minutes and then i'll be answering some of the questions from the audience and this is also recorded we will be uploading this to our youtube channel i'll be showing that towards the end of this webinar let, let us first take what is the indian it industry size based on some of the real statistics the 2012 total revenues by the companies it companies when i say it it includes bpo also they are estimating anywhere between 90 billion and 100 billion dollars that is the revenue size that means the revenue of tcs infosys uh, cognizant dell hp add all of that that means 100 billion 90 to 100 billion dollars of money is pouring into india that's this through this industry and the total employment it is somewhere between 26 and 30 lakhs people but as i said this includes software hardware implementation bpo support and training also so that means anything revolving around it in terms of hardware software bpo this is the total size 30 lakhs people and within pure software hardware alone anywhere between 20 and 22 lakhs people are working currently and 6 to 8 lakhs in bpo there's a question already from one of the audience uh, where do we get these statistics you can refer to nascom site or some of the books like uh, magazines like data quest pc quest uh, they do a great amount of survey and then they collect all these statistics which is useful both for the nationwide planning commission as well as the infrastructure development right so you can get this information from those bodies now when we say these many people right this is direct employment that means they are all either a software programmer or a hardware engineer or an implementation or support or bpo but there is something called indirect employment this is a very very important factor for the country if one industry is there around that there are so many other jobs built in an estimate says 
three times the core jobs is the indirect jobs. That means IT and BPO industry is giving indirect jobs to 80 to 90 lakhs people and everyone should be proud of that. When you say what is the derived job, you cannot run a company just like that. You need security people, you need administrative people, you need um, drivers, caterers, right? Then guest houses, real estate. So what are the support segments that, that is benefiting because of IT? Of course the real estate, the office space builders, travel, you can you can see a lot of buses flying through uh, Bangalore, Chennai, all the cities. You can see hundreds of or even 500 to 1000 buses for the companies, of course catering. You have a canteen in every place, aviation industry and hotels. They are the biggest beneficiaries of this IT industry. Because of this, there are derived jobs. So this is the current industry in size in terms of the revenue and the number of people. But the global industry is more than a trillion dollar. That means more than 10 times what we are seeing. Maybe even anywhere between 1.2 trillion to 1.5 trillion dollars. That means India is taking only 10% of it as part of it. Right? So if at all that Indian industry can do something, it can only grow. Okay? A few people are talking about audio connections. Probably they need to check their mic and speakers or they need to reconnect to this webinar. All others are fine except a few people. Now, let me go to the next slide. Software segments, okay? This is a total industry, but the way IT industry has been divided is in terms of there is something called vertical, there is something called horizontal. I will talk about that. Verticals meaning industry based or domain. A domain meaning something which is core industry and everyone needs to understand something. IT industry does not live on its own. It is a service segment to other industries. Okay, so unless you work for somebody else, IT industry alone cannot live. Uh, is Microsoft making its products only for Microsoft? No, it is making for others. Same way, the verticals are the industries which consume IT. So, people who are doing the programming and other stuff, they should know that domain. BFSI, Banking, Finance, Securities and Insurance. This is the biggest segment. Okay. There are a few questions. Uh, can you give some materials? Probably it is too early to answer now. Anyway, we have got the last 20 minutes for question and answer. So I will answer your questions. Keep posting it, but I will answer your questions towards the end of the webinar. First, some of the information that you need to know I'll be providing then we will take up the question and answers. Healthcare and pharma industry, manufacturing and logistics, logistics meaning transportation, telecom industry. These are all the, there are other industries like education, lot of things but biggest players who need IT by giving more money are these industries. That is called a vertical. There is something called horizontals. Horizontals meaning technology. The technologies are like Microsoft .NET, Microsoft Technologies, Java, IBM Mainframe, Internet Apps, PHP, Python, Perl, Ruby, what not. They are all anything you try to build internet applications. It doesn't mean that you cannot use Java or .NET, but these are all pure internet based applications. Then mobile development apps, databases, packaged softwares like ERP, SAP, Oracle applications, of course the embedded systems. There are a lot more horizontals. Any technology you take that comes under this. But technologies do keep changing always. 
as and when new technology comes, the older technology goes away. Like once upon a time, Fortran, Pascal, they were in use. Those are all not now there. Soon, sometime, uh, VB has gone, VB.net has come. Same way, the technologies do change over a period of time. So software, you can divide into verticals and horizontals. Just a quick question. So far, is it making clear to you? So where I'm heading to? Are you able to grasp what I'm talking in terms of the size, in terms of the software segments? If so, please raise your hands. Cool. I could see the hands raising. That's good. Good. Again, there is one question. Why, why do we know, why should we know the size of the industry? Let me ask you the question back. Why should you study engineering? Why should you study MCA? Because that gives you more opportunity for a job. But who creates the job? The industry creates the job. Unless the industry is big, it cannot create job. And if it is not creating that job, it will dwindle in the education field also. So it is always better that you know the size. Right? Now, the next slide. I am moving to the next slide. People distribution. Let, let us take a simple calculation because one of the fundamental mistakes people do is this. You have got, let us say, 25 lakhs of people are working because I have given a range of 22 to, or say, 26, 24 to 30 lakhs people. But in IT, pure software alone, anywhere between 20 and 22, I am taking a higher number, 25 lakhs people. Now you take 10 major technologies, but the real time is Microsoft, .NET, Java and IBM mainframe. They are the biggest chunk. That chunk alone takes 50% of the people. All the other technologies, they are taking only 50% of the people in real time. So assuming, okay, every technology has equal number of players, we are talking about out of 25 lakhs people, we are talking about 2.5 lakhs people in each technology. So for the last 20 years, we have been built, we have built 2.5 lakhs in each technology. So in, in India, it, it may vary a bit. Maybe in Microsoft technology, who are actually working now, maybe 4 to 2.5 to 5 lakhs max. There is a difference. There may be a number of people knowing Microsoft technology or Java technology, but they may not be working in that. What I am talking about is currently the number of people working in each technology, it can be anywhere between only 2.5 and 4 lakhs. And imagine the industry grows by 10% every year. Unless it grows, it cannot create jobs. The growth is the indication through the jobs. So that means 10% on the 25 lakhs is 2.5 lakhs. So we need 2.5 lakhs people, new people, every year. And the equation is, I don't need all the 2.5 lakhs people knowing only one technology or something like that, but companies do take them, train them in different technologies. You take any big company, they say, .NET stream, Java stream, uh, mainframe stream, uh, SAP or ERP stream, and then testing stream. So people are getting divided after they are getting recruited. Once they are recruited, they are trained, distributed among various areas. Okay. Now, uh, there are a few questions, uh, how can I get a job, etc. As I said, we will be answering those questions towards the end. Let us first go through some of the facts and the figures. So in every technology, you need 25,000 new people every year. And that is a fresher. So you need to get freshers from the college. That should now happen. If the industry does not grow at this rate, this number will come down, but we don't see that in the next 5 to 10 years. It's definitely poised for 10% growth at least. 